Once upon a time, on a cold winter's day, as the snowflakes were falling softly and swiftly, a queen sat sewing by her window. As she looked out, the snow scene was framed like a picture by the black ebony of the window frame. As she sewed, the queen pricked her finger and three drops of blood fell upon her sewing. The red of the blood against the white of the snow, framed by the black wood of the window frame, looked so beautiful that she thought, Oh, how I wish I could have a child as white as snow, as red as blood, and as black as ebony. Now it happened that some time afterwards, the queen did have a baby daughter, whose skin was as white as snow whose cheeks were bright red and whose hair was as black as ebony. The queen called her little girl Snow White. Unfortunately, soon after her child was born, the queen died. A year later, the king married again. The new queen was very beautiful, but much too proud of her own beauty. She could not bear to think that anyone else might be more beautiful. The queen had a magic looking glass which hung on the wall. Often she stood in front of it and gazing at her own reflection, asked this question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, among the ladies of this land, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror always replied, Thou, O Queen, art the fairest of all. The Queen was always content when she heard this reply, for she knew that the magic mirror could speak nothing but the truth. Meanwhile, Snow White was growing from a baby into a lovely little girl. By the time she was seven, with her rosy cheeks and dark, dark hair against her snow white skin, she was even more beautiful than the queen. Thus it happened that one day, when the queen asked her mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, among the ladies of this land, who is the fairest of them all? It replied, among the grown-up ladies tall, thou, O queen, art the fairest of all. Yet the truth I must speak, and so I do vow, that the child Snow White is more lovely than thou. When the queen heard those words, she was both shocked and angry. She looked more closely at Snow White and could not fail to see her growing beauty. Each day, as she watched the girl, the queen's anger and jealousy increased. At length, the time came when the queen's envy of Snow White's beauty gave her no peace, by day or by night. Hatred for the child filled her heart. Then the queen called one of her huntsmen and commanded him, Take this child away, deep into the forest, and kill her, for I can no longer bear the sight of her. The huntsman had no choice but to obey. Taking Snow White by the hand, he led her far into the forest. When he stopped and drew out his knife to kill her, the poor child wept and begged him to spare her life. Please do not kill me, she pleaded. If you will spare me, I shall go further into the forest and I promise never to try to return home again. When the huntsman saw the tears on such a young and beautiful face, he took pity on her. Run away then, my poor child, he said as he put away his knife. The wild beasts will soon devour the poor child, he thought to himself. When Snow White ran off into the great forest by herself, she was terrified. She did not know which way to go, nor yet what would happen to her. She feared she would meet wild beasts which would attack her. She ran on and on, 
over sharp stones and round prickly bushes with long thorns. She heard the roars of wild beasts, but, although some passed her as she ran, none tried to harm her. By evening her feet were sore, her clothes were torn, and her arms and legs were scratched by the thorns. Just as Snow White was ready to fall down with weariness, she came to a little cottage by the side of a mountain. She knocked on the door, but there was no reply. She tried the door, and it opened, so she went inside to rest. Everything inside the cottage was small and neat and clean. A white cloth was spread on the table. The table was laid with seven little plates, seven little knives, forks and spoons, and seven little glasses, all set out in proper order. Against the wall stood seven little beds, each neatly made up and covered with a white bedspread. Snow White was both hungry and thirsty, but she did not want to take anyone's supper. So she ate a little of the food from each plate and drank a mouthful of wine from each glass. Then Snow White was so tired that she longed to sleep. She lay down on the first little bed, but somehow she could not make herself comfortable. She tried the other little beds, but each one seemed too long or too short, too hard or too soft. None suited her until she came to the last one, which felt just right. Soon she was fast asleep. Now the cottage belonged to seven dwarves who, when it became dark, returned home. They had spent all day in the mountains digging for gold. As they entered their cottage, each one lit a candle. By the light of the seven candles, they could see that someone had been there since they had left that morning. The first dwarf cried, Who has been sitting on my chair? The second one asked, Who has been eating from my plate? The third one asked, Who has been eating my bread? The fourth one asked, Who has been eating my vegetables? The fifth one asked, Who has been using my knife? The sixth one asked, Who has been using my fork? The seventh one asked, Who has been drinking out of my glass? Next, the dwarves noticed that their beds were not as neat as when they had left them. The first dwarf looked at his bed and cried, Who has been lying on my bed? Then each one... Then each of the other dwarves, in turn, looked at his own bed and cried, Who has been lying in my bed? But when the seventh little dwarf reached his bed, he found Snow White there, fast asleep. Look who's in my bed, he called to the others, and they all came running to see. They lifted their candlesticks high as they stood around the bed, gazing at Snow White. What a beautiful child, they exclaimed. As the dwarves were anxious not to waken the lovely child who slept so soundly, they tiptoed away and ate their suppers very quietly. Then, when bedtime came, the seventh little dwarf spent an hour in the bed of each of the other dwarfs in turn, and so the night passed. In the morning, when Snow White first awoke and saw the seven dwarfs, she was rather frightened. The dwarfs, however, spoke kindly to her and asked her her name. My name is Snow White, she replied. But how did you find our cottage? they asked. Snow White told them about her stepmother, who had sent a huntsman with her into the forest to kill her, and how the huntsman had agreed to spare her life. Then I ran and ran all day through the forest, she continued, until I came to this little cottage. When the dwarfs heard this sad tale, they were full of pity for the little girl. The eldest one told her, If you will look after us, keep our house clean and tidy, 
cook and wash and mend for us. You can live here with us, and we shall take good care of you. Oh, you are kind, replied Snow White. I shall be glad to do that. However, before they left the house, the dwarfs gave Snow White a warning. We are out all day working, they said, and you will be alone in the house. If your stepmother learns that you are here, she may come and try to do you harm. So be sure to let no one into the house while we are away. Snow White promised to heed their warning. <laughs>